Now, the first integral, what did I ask you to go? What were the limits of the first one? Uh, one, to seven. 1 to 7. The second integral was? 1 to 1. Yeah. 1 to 4. And the last interval was? 4 to 7. Four to seven. OK. So here's what I want you to think about. What I want you to think about is pictorially what's going on. right? You're finding the area under the curve from 1 to 7 in the beginning. So let's say the curve looked like, and I don't even remember what the function was. Let's hypothetically say that the curve looks something like this. OK? Doesn't matter. From 1 to 7 is from 1 here to 7 here. So I need that positive area, that positive area, and then the negative area. Again, I don't know what the shape looked like, so ignore the, exam the actual answers. But from 1 to 7 would be that. Again, assuming 1 was here and 7 was here. Now, from 4 to 7, what does that just do? Just cuts it just piece. cuts a piece of it off, right? And in this case, I happen to pick 4 because 4 is the midpoint of 1 to 7, right? What's the median or the midpoint? Four. So here's 4. OK, so there's 4. So what you're doing here today is this. You're proving that. From 1 to 7, you're going to get an answer. What did you get from 1 to 7? 644, approximately? 24. 24. Thank you. 620. Is that an exact or approximation? Exact. OK. What did you get from 1 to 4? 66.5. Synchronous. You've got to do it all together. All right, last one. What was the answer? 557.25. Very good. Now, what do you notice? What did we talk about? What should happen? You add them up, you get the other one. Again, it's so insane how easy the topic this is and how many people mix it up. You're saying that if you have a whole piece, you break it up into two pieces, it's equal. It's area, addition, posture. Just like I said, two pounds. You got, you got three together then, yes. Again, add them up, you get the total. So, with that said, with that said, what we're going to do today is then start to look and say to ourselves, well, what if we have a piecewise function and we want the area of a piecewise function? What about the fourth? Okay. What about the what? Oh, the fourth. Sorry, there was a fourth one. The fourth one is just to practice with cosine and sine, right? So is the integral of sine of cos x dx? Why did I think it was sine? <laughs> Limits? Negative? And a 3 pi over 2? I'm memorizing. Leave me alone. I don't know. I forgot what it was missed. So here, the integral of cosine is sine. Okay? Again, this is really equal to. Be careful, it's positive. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The integrals are the backwards of that. Just remember that again. The derivative negative rules are opposite for integrals. So sine of x from. So the derivative of sine x negative cos x? The derivative of sine x is just yeah. cos x. Because look, go backwards. Or Take the derivative of this. That's what I'm saying. Well, I'm saying in your mind, work backwards now. The integral, the integral of sine x is negative cos x. Is that what you meant? You said derivative. Yeah, that's okay, you said derivative. Like if these two were switched. If this was sine x, this would be negative cos x. Yeah? Absolutely not. What do I do now, guys? Oh, plug in and solve, please, again. So we evaluate the sine of x at 3 pi over 2, and we subtract that from the sine of x evaluated at negative pi over 4. So plug in the first one, subtract the second one. Does it matter how you do that? No, no, you don't have to write this. What I'm writing now, you don't have to write. Just write this. Write sine of 3 pi over 2 minus sine of negative pi over 4. That's the same thing. See how I'm writing it? I'm writing with the function. And then I'm writing the evaluation symbol at the end. You don't need the evaluation symbol at the end. That's fine. I mean, like, what's the vertical? How do you know what you're looking at, anyway? How well, you need this one over here. Definitely use this one, OK? Because this is telling you. Does it matter if you put it in the frame? Yes, it does. This is saying, take sine of x, evaluate it at an upper limit, and then subtract the evaluation at a lower limit. So in uh, AP test, you we know, right would lose a point? You're not going to lose a point, but if you had this part here, and you, you went from here straight to here, that's OK, actually. Yeah. But I'm just saying be careful along the way. That's all. If you go from here, right here, to jump to this step, that's OK. That's fine. OK? Sign of 3 pi over 2. What if we were to the Hold on. Let's finish it, and then I'll answer. What do you got? Negative 1. Minus negative. Oh, wow. Very intense. <laughs> OK, again. Pi over 4 is 45. Sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. The sine of negative 45, though, is negative root 2 over 2. There's a minus. That makes a plus. OK? 
3 pi over 2 is really 270. Sine of 270 is negative 1. Okay? Again, if you have your calculator, you can plug in your radian mode. This kind of a problem, definitely no calculator. I'll tell you right now. I guarantee you, if this problem is on the AP test, it'll be a multiple choice. This kind of a problem, just like this, very simple. No rules or anything. I've seen a lot of these on there. And, but again, you have to know your trig functions. Okay? You've got to know multiple choice. So negative 1 plus root 2 over 2. And you know what? That would probably be the answer. If they really wanted to get a little bit tricky, they would write it as negative root 2 over 2 plus root, no, I'm sorry, I apologize, negative 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2, so that now you have a common denominator, and then this becomes, okay, this becomes negative 2 plus root 2 all over 2. So any of these three answers could technically be your answer for the multiple choice. Okay, you got to know how to manipulate. So if you get this answer right here, and it's not right, check the other answers to see if they might change. Houston, your question, sorry. Okay. Okay, start. You see what you got the line of those two numbers circling? If you don't write that, will you lose points? Kenny? No, just, just the line in those two circles. So what are you going to write? Just sine of x? Yeah. Yes, that needs to be correct. Again, let's, let's clarify this then. Make, just well, make it all clear. Get the I was asking right. you to answer the question. Oh. Same question. I'm sorry. So here, it is the sine of x, right? Now, if it's an indefinite interval, if we didn't have the limits, what would I put C. at the end? Plus C. Plus C. Yeah. So either you have to have a plus C, or you've got to do some sort of evaluation. So you've got to have one or the other. Or you can, again, as Kenny said, you can go from here right down to there. That's fine. But please don't just write sine of, don't write the integral of cosine x dx equals sine x. Because it's either plus C or you evaluate the limits. It's not just sine of x. There's always some sort of application, a limit, initial condition, which you haven't gone to yet, uh -huh. or C. Write that. What if we still write the answer? You might, you might, to be honest with you. I, I don't know off time I had. I'm not sure about that in, uh, intricacies for, for part two you're talking about, obviously. If you got the right answer and you did all the work right and you forgot your symbol, there might be a chance they might just ignore it. But theoretically, you do get one point for this alone. Like, this is part of the problem, getting this value. Then the second part of the problem is writing it like this. Then the third part of the problem is actually getting the answer. Okay? So you, you kind of want to show your work for these part twos. It always says show your work, guys. It always does. So show all the steps that are needed. But don't, again, don't show things that are not needed. For example, this line is not needed. I'm showing you now so you understand it. But when you take the test, we'll go over this. Again, this is what the goal is to have that time to review how to actually answer them. You don't include that. It's not going to help you. Okay? Someone else had a question over here. We might at some point. You have a question? Okay. So let's start today and let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, I want to go through a few examples of this. I can find my notes. Give me a sec. You come with me. Granted them yesterday. <laughs> All right, my notes are downstairs, guys. I'm going to use off of here because a lot of my notes are right from here. All right, first of all, first of all, try, you know what, we'll do an example to prove the first property. We'll try to prove all these properties with examples to show you how they work because I don't want to just give you the answer for that. So if you had an example that said, and I'll make them very easy so we can see the properties, okay? The integral, the integral of x from 2 to 4 dx. Figure that out. When you're done, figure out the integral from 4 to 2 of x dx. Okay? So for the first one, I want you to do it with the 4 and the 2. The second one, do it with the 2 and the 4. Okay, so try them both. See what you get for each of them. Instead of starting at that same time? It's because it looks weird. I see. Well, now that it doesn't look weird. You really, for your integral signs, and I had a teacher that was like anal about this, integral signs, he had to be perfect every time. It's like a little semicircle, a straight line, really, and then a semicircle. It's not actually like at an angle, okay? It's really a straight line there in the middle. But I could care less, guys, and I think everybody could care less. <laughs> 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 I don't even hear 
Maybe the bird is currently getting eaten and you're just rubbing its face. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Squirrel could have grabbed it. That's funny though, actually. Oh, squirrels eat birds. Oh, so birds. Of course. Squirrels, cats, they always do it. You know that? Is that what they do with like squirrels and cats hunt birds all the time? There's a bird down below? Squirrels, squirrels. Squirrel. 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 My dog kills a bird. bird. A squirrel might not eat it, but it might kill it. It might just attack it. <laughs> you know, my dog was talking my dog when he was a kid thought he was playing around with the bird. It's like he had a bird in his mouth. Oh, he was just playing with it and he killed him by accident. Yeah. Uh, Are we done with this? Yeah. 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 Remember, the integral is the same, guys, but you're just changing your limits now. One is six and one is the bottom is six. Negative six. Good. So the top was six, Kate? Thank you. And the bottom was negative six. So what's our rule, guys? What's our rule? No, no, I want, I want to know. That when the smaller number is on top? Yes, Kenny. Carrie. Wait, for instance, like that, are you going to do like, um, like speed? Like I know. That, then that, that's, what we're going to talk about in a minute is also this stuff like what happens when you change the limits? If we're looking at speed versus velocity, we're going to take the absolute value. So if, this were, if we were looking for the speed, not the velocity, these would be the same answer because it's really the absolute value. Okay? That's the hard part for that one. But in a minute we'll talk about that. For now though, what's the rule here that we can make from this? The conjecture, if you will. Kenny. That when, that when the numbers are the same, but like when... Um, limits. When the upper and lower limits when the upper and lower limits are, are the same, they're the same number, but when the smaller values on top it is negative. Right, close. Oh. Close. Good idea, Kenny. Yeah. Not always true though. I understand what you're saying. Right. When the numbers on the integrals are opposite, the answers are opposite. By opposite you mean they're switched. Yeah. You don't use the word opposite. Because they opposite really means this, right? Okay. Oh, okay. When the, when the numbers on the intervals are switched, when the limits are switched, your area becomes the opposite. This is opposite because negative. That is the right word there. Okay? So again, if you look back at my notes, this is what you're going to see that I wrote down here. Well, actually, this note was not mine. When we can interchange the limits of any definite integral. All that we need to do is take up this tack a minus sign onto the integral when we do this. This is my notes, actually, because there's a typo, and that's me. We have to be exactly the same, right? Okay. No, you don't need the same words, guys. No, no, no. You need no, 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 no. The, no, no, no. the Yes, so look. Look at the symbols, guys. A to B is the same as the negative value of B to A. That's what the rule is right here. Here's the rule. Again, if you are writing this out, because on a test, I'm telling you guys right now, if they ask a question like this on a part two, it'll say, how come the areas happen to be opposite or whatever it may be if you switch them and stuff? This is your law you want to really write down. Okay? The integral from A to B is the same as the opposite of the integral from B to A. Okay? Again, from A to B is the opposite of B to A. We just flip flop and attack on our negative side. Yeah, flip flop. Okay? Next one, number two. Can somebody explain that without actually doing an example? Just explain it. I'm going to get rid of the, neg the, the, the green. The numbers subtracting each other. Sorry. What is the case? It's the same numbers subtracting each other. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If you were going from five to five, Think about it geometrically and then analytically. Geometrically, here's the shape. If I'm finding the integral from 5 to 5, is there any area there? No, there's no area. It's 0. If I found the integral from 5 to 6, then sure, there's an area right there. But the minute these, these things get closer, you get nothing, right? Dots don't represent area, no. Yeah, uh, remember a point is one dimensional? Point is one dimensional. A line is two dimensional? No. Line is, no. A point is zero dimensional, a line is one dimensional, really? an area is two dimensional, a volume is three dimensional. Wow. Point has zero dimensions to it. It's a location in space. Now, the key point here is this. The same thing Kenny just said. If you were to take the integral and you plug in a number, you get an answer, right? But then you got to plug in the same number and then subtract them. So in this last example, if you look at this one and you go from, let's say we went from two to two. From two to two here. Well, plug it in. Oh, you'd have to be... Oops. Let me make it 4 to 4, because that is a coincidence. I don't want to confuse you. Oh, wow. Make it 4 yeah. to 4. You see that, Kenny? Yeah. Okay. Go to 4 to 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay, that's the first part. I plug it in again. I'm going to get 8 minus 8. When I get 8 minus 8, it's just 0. So your rule here is that if your upper and lower limit are the same, the integral turns out to be 0. What's rule 3? Can we explain that one? We did that one already, actually. We talked about that the other day. Good. If C is a constant, if you have some constant in there, 
that is multiplying the whole thing, you can move out in front. You can always factor out a GCN. No, log is not. If it's log of 7, then you can bring that out front, sure. You're thinking of log where log is like, you're saying log of something with an exponent, you bring that out in front? That's log. This is just factoring out a GCN. This comes from, this comes from limits. Remember, the limit, the limit of f of x as x goes to c, the limit of f of x as x goes to c, if you multiply this by some k, is equal to k times the limit of f of x as x goes to c. We did this in the beginning of the year. We said that if you find the limit of a function, and that function is multiplied by a k, you can bring the k out in front. It's the exact same rule, because an integral, remember the other day, we said is a limit. The integral is a limit as what? As then delta x goes to zero. As the width of the rectangle goes to zero, we get the integral. Or as the number of rectangles n goes to infinity, we have the integral. Remember, the integral is a limit of areas. It's a limit. It's a limit. It's a limit. As x goes to c or x goes to k? I'm calling it c. It's any point. Any point. But Two, three, it doesn't matter. k is a constant. So, where does c come in at the top? You're, you're, you're confusing yourself, dude. Call it a number then, please. Call it a number. Stop confusing yourself. We did this in the beginning of the year. If you don't oh, understand it, then ignore it. Okay? As x goes to any number. It's not the same c as that c over there. It's just a constant, okay? Bruce. Where? Again? Yeah. What's going on? Can you come tomorrow and talk to me, please? Or Thursday, at least, day after school? Okay. Please, because I need to know what's going on. All right? Are you going to watch tonight? Okay. Thank you. Let's continue down the page. You know how much of trust I have in you, by the way? Because I'm just letting you go. They didn't call down to dismiss you? No, the office, no. I know, but why don't they call down? I don't know. Probably call If it was me, he wouldn't trust me. No, not at all. I would tell Penny they have to call down. I would tell these. Probably jump out the window. This one, we did this already yesterday. What does this tell us? Who can tell me in words? Read the equation only. Ignore the words for now. Ignore the words. Don't look at the words. Look at the equation only. Oh, oh I see now. <laughs> That basically, um, if you have, if you're taking the derivative of integral, two, integral. Sorry, if you're taking the integral of two functions, it's the same thing as taking the integral of those two functions separately. Very good. So remember we did the polynomial? We took the integral of each term in the polynomial, just like the derivative. You take the derivative of every term separately, same thing. Okay, it's like you're, in a sense, this is going to sound weird, <laughs> but it's like you're distributing the integral sign. Think about it that way. If you distributed the integral sign to both of these, that's what it would really look like. Notice, by the way, I have two dx's now, don't I? dx means that this integral is done, and then we start a new integral here, and that one stops. Here, there was only one dx, which told us that we're doing the integral of the whole thing together. So remember, when you're taking the integral of a function like x squared plus 2x plus 7, you need to integrate each of them separately. Number, number 5. Okay, number 5 is what we just did. Can anybody tell me how number five works? What is number five? What you did for homework last night? What are you doing to the function? You're splitting it. You're partitioning. You're partitioning. Okay? So it's very tough to think about, but if you're going from A to C, it's the same as going from A to B and then from B to C. Okay? That's what we just did in that last one. You're going to use this. You're going to have to partition for velocity and speed. Yep. We're going to use this technique. All these things we're learning, guys, we're going to use them all. We're going to use them a lot. So again, this is the example we did for homework. We did 1 to 7 is the same as 1 to 4 and 4 to 7 together. Okay? Number 6. Number 6 is simply saying, and this one is the most confusing property, not because it's difficult mathematically, it's but the one about the, um, adding in it doesn't matter what the, what it's saying is it doesn't matter what the, no, no, no. It doesn't matter what the independent variable really is, as long as it's the same as the dx. So if you have a function of x, like say 2x squared, and there's dx, and then this is 2t squared, and this is dt, you get the same answer either way. Again, if all of your variables are x's and you have a dx, but if all of your variables were t's and you had a dt, and it's the same functions, you get the same answer. So it's like saying, I can integrate the last problem we did using w instead of x, and use dw, it's the same thing. Now, if the integration is in x and it's dw, then it doesn't work. Remember that? Yeah. It's a constant. You have to think about it as a constant, like yesterday. 
But all this is saying is that it doesn't matter what you call x. Call it w. Call it u. Call it z. Call it j. Okay, and there's a lot of j's in the class. Call it k. It doesn't matter what the variable is, okay? Just like we always said. Remember we have, remember with uh, Newton, we talk about everything's a function of time. So the velocity, position, acceleration are all f of t, or x of t, v of t, a of t. What have we been looking at? x. So what? No difference. Okay? What I really want to isolate is looking at an example of number 5. And here's a really tough example. Okay? We're going to ignore these first few. We did enough of these already. By the way, here's the fundamental theorem we talked about yesterday. Okay, the fundamental theorem from yesterday simply says that the, the derivative of the integral is the original function. Think about it. Isn't a derivative an integral? Do we call those inverse operations? Yeah. When you take a derivative, you're reducing. When you take an integral, you're kind of moving it up a level. So the derivative of the integral is the original function. Now, the original function is t's. See all the t's there? But we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So this is telling me to take the integral, okay, plug in an x, so it's going to be in terms of x, then take the derivative of that, and you're going to get it back to f of x. So what I want you to remember is this. The derivative of the integral, do you want an example? okay, the derivative, sure, I can show you an example, but the derivative, I'll do it in a second, of the integral of f of x or any function is equal to just that original function. Okay, the, it's just saying that the derivative of the integral inverse operations, that's all. I'll show you an example right now. Because Yeah, because they're inverse operations, absolutely. So here, if we had... I was just confused because I thought you did the integral so you would go back to the beginning and the derivative. I thought it would go back to the integral. Let's try it. Okay. Let's find the derivative of the integral of that function. Okay. Notice, you have different things. Your limit is x, your limit is 2. Don't worry about it. Your t is along here and it's dt. So integrate normally with respect to time first. So leave the ddx outside, because we're going to have to keep that the whole way. The integral of t squared. t squared is the t cubed over 3. t cubed over 3. Interval, integral of t. The integral of negative 4 minus 4t, four 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 good, evaluated at x and at 2. Again, that's what we're doing here. Okay, again, our limits are x and 2. Now, in the previous rule you saw, it was a to x, right? That was the rule a to x. a is 2, and x is just x. At this point in time, take a look. If you're going to simplify this, what you're going to end up getting is just, instead of a t, you're going to plug in an x in these spots, right? So you're going to have the same exact equation with x's. And then from the 2, what are you going to get on the end? When you plug in the 2's in these spots, what are you going to get? A number, right? Now, when you take the derivative, what's going to happen to that number? It's going to drop off. So you're going to get back to the original function anyway. And let's prove that. We get x to the third over 3 plus x squared over 2 minus 4x. Now, this whole thing that's evaluating at x. Now it's evaluated at 2. If I plug in a 2, I'm going to have 2 to the third over 3 plus 2 to the second over 2 minus 4 times 2 bracket parentheses. Again, I'm plugging in my upper limit here and I'm plugging in my lower limit here. Now what you're going to notice is you have to take the derivative of this, don't you? So when you take the derivative of all of these, what are they going to go back to? Not zero. The original plus f is x. The original, except with an x in it. Very good, sir. Take the derivative of these. What's the derivative of x to the third over 3? Because now you're doing the derivative of this. It's 3x squared over 3, which is x squared. This is 2x over 2. This is just negative 4. Well, take a look. This is really x squared plus x minus 4. What's the derivative of this number here? Zero. The derivative of it, it doesn't matter what it is. The derivative of any number is zero. So this turns out to be your answer. Go back to the beginning, guys. Look at the beginning. Same thing, but that was in t, wasn't it? And now it's in x. 
But it was the original, it's the original function of the integral. It's the derivative of the integral, of the original function. Again, you took the integral of the original function, you then evaluated it, then you take the derivative of the evaluation. Well, the derivative of the integral shouldn't it just cancel? It does, yeah, but we have x's now. Yeah, because I was confused what you were saying before. I was saying that it would go like, yeah, I was thinking it would go back up. And no, no, no. Yeah, so it goes up, and then it comes back down. Yeah, so it's the yeah. Chris? Again, guys, that's one of the fundamental theorems there. It's, it's almost, I don't want to be like mean, but it's almost common sense. You're, you're more logic than you are mathematics here. And I'm showing you mathematically why. But think logically why. If you take the derivative of an integral, they're kind of like inverse operations. Yeah. Okay, multiply by 2, divide by 2, they cancel. So you, have to like original function. so you don't have to show how that works. Out. No, absolutely not. What's the like original function? The original function in this case was t squared plus t minus 4. We integrated with respect to x, so it became the x in there. And then we took the derivative with respect to x, same thing. Christian, if this had been like a t here, dt, that would have to be a t up there then. And then you would have a t, and it would get back to the original, the actual original t's. Okay? All right, let's continue with... Is it like a changing from the variable of t to x? It is because you took the derivative with respect to x. So if you didn't do that, Kenny, if you didn't have x's here and you had t's, how do you take d dx of a t? It's a constant now. If you're trying to take the derivative with respect to x of t, t becomes a constant. So those are all drop off. So it is very important that you have x over there. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. Okay, we can take a look at this one here. Before we get to the solution. Oops. Let's take the integral of this This is a good multiple choice problem, by the way. Good multiple choice problem. I've seen a lot of these. Look at this one, write it down, and then write down the given for this. I'm going to crop it so we can put it right on the page. Just right. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm chill. I want the outline though also to be white. No. <laughs> See the color? What color is this? That's white. Wait. So um, when when they ask, but there's really a. Square over here Wait, somewhere. Is six I move the square, we don't cover it. Wait, so if it's 6, negative 10, is that ft just take the negative part of it? Because it's saying. Yep. Well, we're going to have to figure that out right now, so we're trying to apply. Yeah. We're going from negative 10 to 6, right? That's the key. Yeah, so then you plug it back into the original function. Which well, not. No? Slow down for one sec. Start writing if you want. Start writing. But I want to just discuss as a group what we're going to do here. Oh, so we know. You have it all written down? No, start writing. Make sure it's written down. Have it written down, please. This is like straight off of an uh, AP exam, that multiple choice kind of problem. And your answers are going to be numerical answers. Okay, it's going to be like 7, 2, 5. It's going to be numerical answers. Hey, what'd you get? Let's see if you're right. Let's figure it out. All right. So to go from negative 10 to 6, we start by saying this, guys. You have two different functions. Guys, listen. Yeah. You have two different functions. So here, what I need to do is go from negative 10 to 6 and negative 10 to 6 of 2f of t dt and negative 10 g of t dt. Okay? Now, what I would do is I would move each constant out, not out of each, out of both. So take the 2 out and the 6 out. Write this as 2. Sorry. What, what's wrong? I said, yeah, separate. Remember we just talked about separation, guys? I'm separating them with the negative 10 there. So 2 times f of t dt. We're using all of our laws that we just learned and applying them here. This is going to be minus 10 integral negative 10, 6 g of t 
dt. Okay? Again, if you can go from the first line to the third line, please do it. Don't write the second line. There's no need to. Go from the original down to here. Separate them both. Apply a dt to both of them and factor out their, uh, their constants. Yep. Now, for f of t, we were given what? We were given that the integral from 6 to negative 10 is 23. But this is the integral from negative 10 to 6. It's just negative. What is it? Negative. Negative 23. That's our rule. Remember, this is really the negative of that. So this becomes 2 times negative 23. That's the hard part again. Because look, you're going from negative 10 to 6. Again, you're going from negative 10 to 6 instead of 6 to negative 10. Up here, though, you're going from negative 10 to 6, right? Everybody see this up here? You are going from negative 10 to 6. So negative 9 is the number you want to plug in here. So it's going to be minus 10 times negative 9. Okay, again, take a look down at the bottom. This entire integral right here is negative 9. That was given in the problem right up there. This entire interval, or integral rather, sorry, is negative 23. Now combine like terms. It's given in the beginning of the problem. This box is given as 23. Look at the beginning. But it's reverse limits. So we have to switch the limits, which makes it a negative. Okay, over here, from negative 10 to 6 of g of t is given. Negative 10 to 6 of g of t is negative 9. So we can replace that with negative 9. This is really, like, no calculus at all. It's substitution method, actually. You're substituting in. That's all you're doing. So negative 46 and 90, 44. Edgar, where was the mistake you made? Uh, uh, the, the swap. Okay. Uh, swap. Right. Again, just be careful there. Now, you, what was your answer, though? What would you say? So 136, what would that be? Another choice. Guarantee you. If he forgot the swap, there's a good chance a lot of people forget the swap. Okay, they look at the common mistakes and they say, let's make those the other multiple choice answers. So you need to be careful. You need to make every single thing correct. If you make one little mistake, there's a good chance you'll be correct, but with the wrong answer. Again, your answer will appear there and you're going to circle and say, nice, it's one of the choices, I'm done. In reality though, you're not done. It's actually incorrect. Can you do it without that? Or does it make a difference? Sure, if you want to do it all in your head, I absolutely encourage you to. Yep. I would have done it in my head. I would have done 2 by negative 23 minus 10 by negative 9. You got the answer. Instead of separating it, No, 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 no. You could factor out a 2 in the beginning, sure, that's fine. But then you have to separate them to do this because you're given each integral separately, aren't you? Isn't that what's given? You're given the integral of f by itself, you're not given the sum of that. You're given the integral of g by itself, so they need to be separate for that reason. If you're given what the integral of f of t plus g of t is, then maybe you can work them together. Really like, it's really like, like they are separate anyway. So like if you take g of, like g of t as like a variable, think about it. G of t is a function, but so if you want to think of it as a variable, yes. Yeah, exactly. As a variable. Yep, think of it as a variable, sub in for that box. This box in blue, it's a variable. Yep, that's the way to do it. All right, let's go to another one. Okay, this is the one I want to work on. This is the hardest one by far. And this, okay, good, we got 20 minutes. It's going to take a little while to work. So write down all the givens, please. I'll copy it again on the page. Oh, you know what? There's a lot of ready to do. I'm going to go use this. I'm going to go through it one at a time. So given that the integral from 12 to negative 10, which doesn't make sense really, because you usually go lower to upper. Okay, given that that's equal to 6 for f of x, given that the integral from 100 to negative 10 is equal to negative 2, and 100 to negative 5 is equal to 4, determine negative 5 to 12. This is a very tough problem. It is very, very difficult. And I'm not saying this just to you know, mess with you guys. Once you see how it's done, you're going to be like, oh, that makes sense. But to think of this on your own is very difficult. What is the integral from negative 5 to 12 really mean again? Uh, what does it mean? Between, between, between those x values. The area between those x values under the curve, right? That's what we're looking for. So what I want you to do is start by visualizing this. We don't have a function at all. OK? 
Okay, we do not have a function. But I do want you to think about it this way. In the, the example of the answer here, I don't go through this example. I want to show exactly what. So this, God bless you. Our, look at our biggest and our smallest limits. Where are they? What's the biggest limit out of all of them? 100. What's the smallest? Negative 10, right? So this function is really, we're looking between negative 10 and 100. So let's start by doing that. Okay? Start by doing that. Now, let's say hypothetically that the curve looks Okay? Oops. Thank you, Kenny. I thought I wrote I did write it. See? Oh. Well, I saw that actually zero. It was there a minute ago. All right. So let's say the function looks like that. And if you want to find the integral from negative 10 to 100, that's just the area underneath this curve, right? So this middle one is from 100 to negative 10. So what would the actual area be from negative 10 to 100? Two. Two. Be careful. This is the integral from 100 to negative 10. Oh, okay. This is the integral from 100 to negative 10. The area is negative 2. From 100 to negative 10. But we're going from negative 10 to 100, right? So the actual area for this, if you took all these areas and summed them up, you'd get 2. Again, the area from here to here is 2. But how do you make that smoothly? Or you don't just draw any I'm drawing any function, arbitrarily. Okay, next. Look at the beginning part here. What does this tell me? The integral from where to where is what? And use lower to upper. Switch them if you have to. Is? Very good. The integral from negative 10 to 12, so switch them up, is really negative 6. Agreed? Negative 10 to 12. Well, where's negative 10? Negative 10 is here, and 12 is somewhere in here. So I'm going to put a little mark. And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to put my line down, and this does not... It's not geometrically correct what I'm doing, but I'm showing you how I think about it. This area is really negative 6 from there to there. Agreed? We just said that. Now, we're trying to find the area from negative 5 to, ne to positive 12. So we still got some work to do. What is the last part telling you? And I want to know lower to upper. Lower to upper. The area is negative 4, you said, right? Okay. From negative 5, which now we have to put another mark in. Let's put a mark there for negative 5. From negative 5, go down, go down, go down, start the arrow here, all the way to 100, the area is negative 4. Oh, I see. see what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm looking at overlapping areas now. Watch what I'm going to do. So what I want to think about is this. You're trying to find the area from negative 5 to 12, which is really from here, negative 5, to here, which is 12. So your goal is to find the area between those two arrows. Again, here was the 12. Here was the negative 5. We know the whole area is 2. We know this portion is negative 6. We know this portion is negative 4. The question becomes, well, what is this area in between, right? What is the area in between? Does everybody see visually what we're doing right now? Yeah. yeah. I see nods except from some people. If you don't understand what's going on, we've got to slow down, guys. It's not a problem, but we have to actually make sure we understand this. So you look up for... We're finding the area from negative 5 to 12, right. which is from here to here, so that's the blue. We're given the area from negative 10 to 12, which is negative 6. That's this, negative 10 to 12. We're given the area from negative 100 to 100, which is positive 2. Negative 100 to 100. Because I'm flipping them all. Again, I want the area really from negative 10 to 12. So this is just negative 6. Negative 10 to 12. I'm going left to right always, okay? Here I want the area really from negative 10 to 100. So from negative 10 to 100, its area is really positive 2. That's that one there, negative 10 to 100. From negative 5 to 100, if I flip this one also, negative 5 to 100, its area is negative 4. That's the area of 5. Okay, so I'm just flipping all those signs because the limits were all in reverse order. I have a question. Yes. Is it coincidence that you have to go where all... No, it's not. They have to. They have to overlap there, else it wouldn't work this way. Your endpoints need to be those endpoints that you're looking for, yes. Not a coincidence. Again, the question is, is it a coincidence that this blue line happens to line up with the endpoint of this ray, or segment, rather, segment, right, and the endpoint of this segment? Yes, that's the exact same thing it should be, okay? Now, here's the question, though, guys. i got to figure out what that area is. How do I do that? What's missing in the middle there? The whole thing is 2, right? So if the whole thing is 2, what does it make this portion here? 
If this is negative 6, what's left over here in this little end point? What is it? 8. Again, this, we don't know what this is. It's not given to us in the problem. But it's got to be 8. The whole thing is 2. If this is negative 6, negative 6 and 8 gives you 2. If this is negative 4, though, if this is negative 4, what is this area? What must this area be? What is it? 6. That must really be 6, right? So, if I know this is 6, and this is 6 minus the 4 gives me the total of 2, again, the whole area of the whole segment is 2. The whole area is 2. This is negative 4. To cancel out that negative 4 and give me 2 more, it means 6. So I know that this piece is 6 and this piece is 8. So together, what do those pieces make up? The, the, four, the 6 and the 8? 12. 12. 14. 14. Again, this part is 6. This part is 8. That's 14. I'm looking for this part, aren't I? So to get back to 2, what must that part be? Negative 12. Negative 12. Again, you're looking at me like I have 7 heads. That's why I need to go slower. This portion really makes up 6 because 6 and negative 4 gives you the whole interval of 2. This portion must be 8 because 8 and negative 6 gives you 2. We're looking from here to here. So we're trying to find from here to here. Well, we know that from here to here is 6. From here to here is really 8. And if the whole thing is 2, 6 and 8 is 14. This has to be negative 12 to give you a positive 2. Because 6 and 4, 8 is 14 minus 12 is going to be 2. So the answer is negative 12. That's the way to look at it geometrically. Now let's look at it analytically with variables. Just look at it because I, since the whole thing is 2, can you just add negative 6 and negative 4 to get negative 10 and see how you can get that equal to Let me just, hold on one second, okay? Negative 6, which is this region, and this region is negative 10. So you're looking at the union of two regions, the overlap, right? Yeah. So this is negative 10, and you're saying to yourself... Like, since it's 2 and it's negative 10, plus 12 will equal it, will give 2, right? What? I think that's a coincidence here, Kerry. Let me think for a second. I understand what you're saying. You're saying that this negative 6 and this negative 4 together incorporate a total of negative 10, but they have two overlapping parts. So we have to remove one of those overlapping parts. What is the removal 12? You can do that. Yes, you can. Absolutely. But keep in mind the sign. Because you had a positive 12, right? When you did it in your head, it's negative 12 there. So keep it, be careful of that. But what you're looking at is that there's a union of two sets. This set and this set together include a union here. So you have to remove one of those unions. What is that removal? 12. Okay? Let's look at this algebraically now. So again, let's do this whole thing algebraically. And by algebraically, again, all I mean is that we're going to look at the actual integrals of each of these. Uh, Mr. Where did I get the 12 from? What 12, dude? This one here? What I said was this. We, had, we, we found out this was 8. Is that okay? We found out this was 6. Right? So these portions of the line make up 14. So what portion in the middle is missing to get back to 2? Between eight and six. Again, this length is 6 right here. That's a length of 6. That's a length of 8. And the total length, so we're missing this portion here. The total length has to be 2. That was the beginning we started with. So what must be between them to give you 2 if you add them all up? That's where the negative 12 comes from. That's your answer. This 4 here? This 4 was used. You do. You do. This 4 was used to get you the, neg to get you the 6. This oh, negative okay. 6 was used to get you the 8. Oh, okay. Remember, this is only 6, Houston, because 6 minus 4 is 2. Right. This is only 8 because 8 and negative 6 is 2. You use those two to get these, then you use these to get the answer. Okay? My <laughs> dying Oh, forget this. This is just going to go all crazy. <laughs> Kenny, can we stop, please? Thank you. Let's go to this one, and let's take a look at this algebraically now. I know you see the green. Ignore it, please. I'll try to get it off the schedule. So, in this problem, it's the same exact thing, but now we're going to look algebraically. Okay, now we're going to look algebraically. We're trying to find the integral from negative 5 to 12. Well, here's what I'm going to think about algebraically. Start with the lowest and biggest again. 
Lowest number still is negative 10. Biggest number is 100. Right? Okay. So if I want the integral from negative 5 to 12, I can think of it as a bunch of pieces added together, geometrically, but also algebraically. Algebraically speaking, if I knew that the integral from negative 10 to 100, I know what that is. It's given in one of my problems right here. So I start by saying, okay, the integral from negative 10 to 100, which is the whole thing we talked about, of f of x dx can be broken into the integral from negative 10, okay, from negative 10 to negative 5 of f of x dx plus the integral from negative 5 to 100 of f of x dx. That's the first step. Again, take a look and make sure that makes sense to you. To go from negative 10 to 100, it's like going from negative 10 to 5, and then again from negative 5 to 100. I'm just breaking in parts. We did this in your homework. Same as the homework one, okay? Now, the problem here is this. You don't have these values. Negative 5 to 100. You have it right here. That's fine. So you got that portion. But do you have from negative 5 to negative 10 anywhere? You don't. So you need to then break this up further. And look at the other ones you have to break it up. So what I'm going to show you in the next is how to do that. Looking at these two. You want to use this portion here or some other portion and some other thing and combine them to get this. This is very difficult because we don't know what we have. But we do have this right here. Doesn't, See that? Doesn't that change the other one though? It, leave this alone for now. Okay. Again, the equation is the same. This is equal to the sum of these two. You know this value. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. What I mean, you know it. So just leave it. And what I mean is to make another function because you can't, in that, in that function you just create, in that whole thing you just created now, you can't, you can't really change negative 5. Sure you can. I'm simply going to break this up into two parts and I'm going to carry this right down. Okay? So now, watch, and this is going to sound really weird. I know the integral from negative 10 to 100, don't I? Okay? I also know the integral from negative 10 to 12. I also know the integral from 5 to 100. So I've got a lot of stuff going on here. But I want to go from negative 10 to 5. From negative 10, okay? From negative 10, sorry, to negative 5. So for this one, I have to break this up into the different parts that I have, but it doesn't look like I have any of them at first. Okay? It doesn't look like I have any of them at first. That's what you have to start doing. You got to start looking at what you have up top and see what's more than what. So, if I break this up into negative 10 to 12, to, to 12, watch this. Okay, negative 10 to 12. Even though I know we only went from negative 10 to negative 5, watch what happens here. To go from negative 10 to 12, because I have that up here, again, only because I have that. That's why I'm using it. That's why I picked that number there. I'm picking a random number right now. I'm not actually, I don't know the answer right now. I'm picking randomly. Okay? I just want to know why when we look at it as in the area we flipped it. Like, we've been looking at all of them, we flipped Because I'm trying to go from lower to upper, even though the problem is given from upper to lower. It's given from upper to lower to confuse you, because you know you have to switch them. But I always go from lower to upper. It'll be consistently better. So, so, so with that, so you basically. And I'm going to switch it and switch the opposite. Yes, we're going to switch the sign. But again, guys, we are not plugging in these numbers yet until the very end. Let's keep doing this algebraically. So continuing down, if I went, here's the tricky part. If I went from negative 5 to 12, well, the problem is that this problem only says to go from negative 5, negative 10 to negative 5. So I went an additional part, didn't I? I went additionally from negative 5 all the way up to 12. So in order to make this equal, I need to subtract an integral from negative 5 to 12. Again, because what did I do? I went too far. I don't want the negative 5 to 12. I want to stop at negative 5. So by subtracting that, I'm getting rid of that area. So this helps me a little bit still. And then I carry this down. So I still have plus the integral from negative 5 to 100. Again, carrying this down to 100. And I'm going to see that on this side is the integral of f of x dx. And take a look, guys. Here's what I want you to notice. Think about, think about the chain rule, the chain rule from geometry. If I made this a plus in the middle, what would I have to do to these two limits? Switch them, right? And then, you don't have to write this right now, but if I did this, it would look like this now. It would be a negative, it would be a positive 12 down here and a negative 5 up here. Now take a look. Take a look. From negative tw 10 to 12, 
and then from 12 to negative 5. These kind of cancel each other out. That's what we talked about earlier. Remember? Your homework. You went from 1 to 4 and then from 4 to 7. So you went from 1 to 4 and then from 4 to 7. And that really meant to go from 1 to 7, didn't it? Again, this was a 1 and a 4. 4 to 7 meant you went from 1 to 7. So by doing it this way, you also see that negative 5 and negative 10 are my actual limits. Because these kind of cancel each other out. Which is what you had to start with. Okay, but we don't need to show that right now. I'm not going to show that. I just want to show, I want you to see how it's mathematically correct. What the heck is going on here? There we go. All right. Now, to continue this process, we still have to think to ourselves, okay, do I have the integral from negative 10 to 12? Is that given anywhere? Where is it given? Right here, right? Okay, good. Do I have the integral from negative 5 to 12? No. So what do I still have to do to this one? I have to keep breaking this one up. But I've got this one. Again, I've got this. Check. I've got this. Check. We're done. But this one needs to be broken up further. It's a something else that we have. And look at its limits now. Christian. One second. So when you break it up, you only have to have the lower limit be the same as the lower limit. So the lower limit of the original needs to remain the lower limit. The upper limit from the original needs to really remain the upper limit, because if it's a plus sign, if it's a plus sign, we did a minus. But with a plus sign, it remains the upper limit, and then the number in between is arbitrary. It's up to you to choose. It's like saying, you're picking a partition in the middle. It doesn't matter where you pick it, the sum of them is still the same. Sum of these two versus the sum of these two is the same thing. I mean, at this point, can't you just, since you're, since you're trying to find a way to the negative sign, can't you just pull it out? I mean, you know, you do the opposite, put on that side, and then put the 100 over 10 on that side. Let me, let me just... But you said I'm talking about put out... I do, I do. Let me just really quickly, guys, show you what the answer turns out to look like to make it easier. This is remaining, again, because we didn't change it. We leave it alone. This minus sign, I'm going to carry down. I have to break this up into two things. And then I keep the end on. Okay, remember, keep the end on, f of x dx. Now, the quick thing to look at is this. I want to break up negative 5 to 12 into something I know. I know negative 5 to 100. And I know, where's the other one? Negative. Hold on. I know negative 12 to negative 10. And I know negative 10 to 100 here. So... For this one, I'm going to have to break it into three parts. But it's not, it's not going to cross clearly. I know that. But no, I mean, it does. But The geometric way in the beginning, was that easier to start? Definitely. Like, yeah. Yeah. But this is Personally, when I took calc, I did it the geometric way. I'm trying to show you the other way to do it because it has to do with your limit properties in the top and bottom. Okay, it has to do with the fact that you can switch the signs and switches and stuff, and you can break it up. Let's try and pick up on Thursday. What I want you to do this is tonight. I'm going to give you guys some homework to do during lunch. I'm going to bring it to lunch right now. I've got to copy it real quick. Okay, you have two nights to do it. All I want you to do is just practice. It's going to involve all, your, all of your rules, all of your laws you look at. Okay, so I'm going to bring it to lunch with you. Instead of, like, like you know, like you could break it up and fall off, but instead of doing that, when you pull it out, when you just know the rules, you the If anyone turn it in. You see the problem? Because, because that's we, yeah, we're trying to find negative well, At least that's what the problem was in our original. Not right here. You gotta go back to. The oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Houston is absolutely right. Houston, I didn't, I didn't even notice that. At this point in time, make it easier on yourself. There's a shortcut. Just move this over to this side of the equation because you're looking. Houston, very good. Thank you. Sir. Sorry, I mis misunderstood you. You're looking from the integral from negative half to twelve, aren't you? Yeah. That's what that is right there. So oh, since wow. over here, you're trying to figure it out. Solve for it, right? So basically, just plug it in. But remember, remember, sorry, on this side right now, what do you have over here? This is the original integral, like this, of f of x dx. So you add it to this side, you get those numbers, and then divide them by two. Because again, if you move this over, if you move this one over, it's going to become double that, right? There's a negative one here. So to get rid of it, you're going to add it to this side. So you're going to have two of these. So whatever you get as your answer as the sum of this and the sum of this, you divide that by two. That's a good use. Awesome. Nice work, dude.
Did you see that also? That's what I thought you were doing with this. The, that's the way to, I never even thought about doing that. Absolutely. What you're doing there is you're just moving and rearranging. You could keep breaking it down, but it wouldn't be worth it. Then I would have forgotten to divide by two because I didn't see that. Okay. That you need, yeah, that was the original on that side.